What is going on guys? We're going to take a look today at the runic deck that's got me up to diamond. It's fairly easy to play, uh, one of the easiest one uh, to play right now and it hasn't been really hit by any of the upcoming uh, ban and forbidden list that we just got a list of. I think the only card that's really affected by it is card of demise, um, but it's just being semi-limited I believe so it's not even a big deal. But anyway, let's go ahead and just start taking a look at the deck list, and then I'll show you a couple examples of how it actually plays. So, for anyone who doesn't know, Runic decks, their whole main objective is banishing from the top of the opponent's deck, banishing as many cards as they can, and eventually decking them out. Um, as a primary objective, of course, there's different builds you can do uh, that allow you to have different objectives, whether it's just to sort of stagnate a little bit of their combos and then go in for an OTK or something like that. This one is as pure as it can get for a runic deck. Um, I really enjoy it and like I said it got me up to diamond. It's just really fun to play. It is a little bit of a... Uh, it, it sucks to play against, I'll say that. It's not the, the most engaging, I guess. But there are some plays that there is some back and forth and I'll show you some examples of that. But anyway, let's go ahead and break down the deck real quick. So there's terraforming, of course, one of that. Uh, let just let you get your field deck. I'm sure everyone knows that card. We got three cards of demise. Now this one is, is you have to keep in mind that the drawback of this in this particular deck is you're not able to get any of your extra deck monsters out that same turn. And of course it discards your hand, so you got to be careful with how many you're going to be able to set down after that three. But I mean, it was super useful card to get that uh, that deck combos rolling, right? So. That's going to be semi-limited coming up pretty shortly, so this will be removed to two. But honestly, there's so many cards that can take its place to maintain that 40-card uh, deck. Um, you know, things like I was just looking, kind of scrolling through, and even any of the hand traps, right? I have no hand traps in here. Anything like that would work. Honestly, a Harpy's Feather Duster, if you're doing a uh, mirror match of sorts, card destruction might even work. Uh... I mean, I was even looking at this. I didn't even know about this card. This Lullaby of Obedience. That seems like it could be useful in some scenarios. But yeah, so it's not a huge deal. This is the only card that's really being affected. Um, next up, two Pot of Dualities. Again, this is another combo starter. Pretty much, this is a, a super consistent deck. You're always going to have a starter or something that gets you to a starter, right? In this case, Cards of Demise or Pot of Duality. Um, which, of course, same drawback as Card of Demise. You're not going to be able to... Uh, special summon that turn but that's fine because these are quick um uh quick effect uh or i'm sorry quick play spells anyway so you're gonna be able to summon pretty much at the beginning of the next turn anyway you're not gonna need a monster out on your turn usually so those are you know the drawbacks fine i have one pot of desires you can play around with that i don't like banishing too much of my own deck because there have been a couple scenarios where it becomes a top decking just to see who draws out first sort of grind and if you have too many banished um, you may hit a little bit of your combos there so next up we got three runic fountains i've seen people play one definitely don't do one i've seen people play two and that can work out um i just enjoy three because a lot of times people are going to banish one get rid of one and maybe even destroy a second and by then they usually feel a little safer that you're not going to bring it back out and when you, if you have a third one it's just you know you can have one banished one in the graveyard and one in your deck and you're fine right all right next up runic allure i have one of these honestly i was thinking of making it up to two but it's been working out just fine it's just a dead card in your hand if you already have one in the field or um generally even if you have it in the graveyard you're not going to need another one so uh, just to go over actually real quick what it does, the Runic Fountain, what it does is once you play it, you can do quick play spells from your hand, meaning the majority of the Runic uh, cards are going to be played from your hand on the opponent's turn. Um, it allows you to do that. That's sort of a secondary thing. The main thing you're wanting to do is to extend your, your turns as well as extend the plays on their turn. And that's after you play a Runic card, it allows you to... Uh, target up to three of the cards in your graveyard, shuffle them back into the deck, and then grab as many cards as you shuffled back in. So usually you're going to wait until you have at least three runic cards in the graveyard, shuffle all three, and then you get three more cards. It's a draw three. Um, of course, you're not adding any amount to your deck. So if you are in a scenario where you're both just top decking, waiting until somebody decks out, it's not going to help you any. 
but it does help you get again three more cards and they're usually i mean you can look at this lineup right it's going to be another uh another runic card so super useful and it allows you to just keep extending plays on either turn if you if you can keep it on the field but that'll be protected by some of the extra deck which i'll show runic lore super simple anytime a quick place spell card is used it banishes the top card off their deck a single card this helps a lot because if you, especially if you're playing in a mirror match if you get this card out first even though they're the ones sitting there and playing all these runic cards banishing your deck you're also slowly whittling away there so when it's your turn same thing right because it applies to any quick play uh spell card on the field not just yours um so it just lets you win faster it's not really a requirement you don't need it on the field to win or to do the uh the main combos it's just to help you win a little bit faster uh three runic tips this is your searcher card for the runic deck it allows you to add well and i should mention all of these that i'm about to come up so all of these runic cards all the way down to the trap cards that i'm moving on now have a secondary effect you can choose one or the other it's got a secondary effect that allows you to special summon a runic monster from your uh, extra deck onto the uh, extra monster zone so you really you can only have one out at a time but that is a secondary effect and it doesn't obviously activate the first effect so all of these allow you to get one of these monsters which means they can be combo starters they can also just be defenders um, against targeting and they can be uh, you'll see in just a second but i wanted to point that out so i don't have to keep telling you that the secondary effect of this card is that they all have the same secondary effect so this is the searcher card it allows you to add one runic card from your deck any runic card um and then it banishes the top card of the deck a single card and so that uh, that banishing it's not really the biggest right it's just a side effect of being a searcher uh which is good um all right so we got runic flashing fire this one allows you to destroy a special summon monster and then if it is destroyed you banish the top two cards off their deck again this is great because you can use this um, you know, a lot of the negates that there are out there on monster cards are avoiding destruction from other monster effects, or I should say negating monster effects, that sort of thing. Like if you got the uh, the bow goddess or whatever her name is, a lot of those that are being used right now aren't going to be uh, really able to deflect runic flashing fire or negate it, um, especially in combination with another one, freezing curses that I'll show in a second. Next up, we got Runic Destruction. This allows you to target and destroy one spell or trap card on the field, your opponent's field. And then it banishes the top four cards off their deck. So it's, it banishes it a lot in, in comparison to the other cards, right? And you can usually always find a target, especially a lot of the decks being used now will have a continuous or a spell or a field spell, right? So you're always usually going to have a target and then you're going to be able to banish a bunch off the top of their deck. Uh, next up, we got Freezing Curses. That allows you to target an effect monster that your opponent controls and negate its effect until the end of the turn and then banish top three cards. So again, three cards, that's a good good amount of cards that you're banishing off the top of their deck. But more importantly, it's a quick play and it negates the effects of, a, of an effect monster, right? So a lot of times you'll be able to do flashing fire. They'll do some sort of negate response and you'll be able to cancel it out on top of that. And not only that, if you got the a lower out, you're banishing two extra cards off the top of their deck. And then if you have the Runic Fountain as well out, you're going to be able to cycle those cards back into your deck and pull two or three more cards. So great combos right there. Super easy to use combos. There's not a whole lot of uh, high level thinking, critical thinking to be able to play this deck until you meet a, an opponent that just has the right deck and you're sitting there and you have to calculate very heavily which order you're doing stuff in and and the order of the chain is very important, of course, with this deck. So, but a lot of times it's sort of almost autopilot, to be honest with you guys. Like, you just know what to do, right? So next up, we got Runic Slumber. Three of those. I, I, this isn't the most useful one. It's just sort of to have another Runic card because you can only use one each one of these once per turn. So it's just to have another card that you can use because you're pretty much going to be cycling through a big portion of your deck per turn. Um, this one. Target one face-up monster either side of the field. Next time that monster would be destroyed by card effect or battle, it just won't be until the end of the turn. After that, you banish the top three cards off the opponent's deck. So the banishing is the main portion. Technically, you can use slumber on your own monster to protect it like real quick. 
you can use it like that. I haven't seen that scenario pop up often. You would think it would, but it, it doesn't. A lot of the times, the way that I'm playing Runic Slumber is I'm targeting an opponent's monster because I have no monsters um, on purpose. And, you know, because I played Card of Demise or something like that. And I don't have any monsters on the field, but I'm using that just to banish three more cards off their deck and maybe get another Runic card into the graveyard, you know, because it's got an applicable target. And uh, work off of my uh, my fountain and even my allure off of that. So uh, a lot of times this is doing nothing other than just being able to use the uh, banishing effect. Next up we got ruining, I mean runic smiting storm. This one can be very very useful depending on the deck you're playing against but it banishes cards from the top of your opponent's deck equal to the number of cards they control meaning on the field not hand. So if, he, if they got a full field you're getting I mean, you're getting, what, 11 cards out? Though that's normally not going to happen. Some of the highest numbers I've reached are 6 or 7. A lot of people have a whole bunch of, you know, extra deck monsters and a few uh, uh, continuous spells and that sort of thing. So, But either way, again, it's another card that you can use. And uh, it just really plays into the fountain and the lore uh, mill that you're kind of having there. So next up, we got Runic Golden Droplet. I love this card actually in conjunction with dispelling so what runic golden droplet does is you your opponent draws a card so you give them a free draw and then you banish the top four cards of their deck again it takes a whole bunch off their deck in one go so that's great but they are getting that extra card right so that can be um, detrimental it's good to play this toward the end of your turn because there's a chance that if you're going to chain another runic card they could have drawn into Ash or something like that, right? So you want to avoid using this too early in your turn and potentially ending your turn early. But if you have this card as well, at the same time that you play that Runic uh, Droplet, Golden Droplet, is Runic Dispelling. If your opponent adds a card to their hand from the deck, uh, except during the draw phase, so of course not regular draw, but if they add a card from the deck to the hand, you can discard one random card from their hand and then you banish two cards off the deck. So of course, if you do Golden Droplet to force them to draw one card, banish four off the top, then you do this spelling, random card from their hands, discard it. It could be the wrong one. Maybe they did get an Ash, and then they're, you know, it, there's, of course, it's not perfect, but you are discarding one card, potentially the one they just drew, uh, banishing two more cards from their deck, so it's a total of six. And if you had a Lore out, for example, then you do two more, right? Because you play two quick spells. And now you're up to eight. You you banished eight in pretty much one go, right? So super great. Now, I'm actually about to change this a little bit. Uh, traps are really just floodgating them, right? You get two rivalry of warlords that allows you to control one type of monster. Only one type of monster. Uh, but most meta decks now are all one type anyway. You got fiends, you got um, cybers, whatever it is, right? They're usually one type anyway that I've seen. So, in conjunction when there can only be one, I feel like I might make this a two. Oh, I just lost it. Um, I might make there can only be one a two in my deck because this only allows you to control one monster of each type. Now, if you get lucky and play both there can only be one and rival rivalry of warlords, they're only going to have one card on the field. One monster card. Um, and then... Furthermore, Skill Drain, everyone knows what Skill Drains does, right? So if you're able to get all three of these Floodgates out, it, they're going to have a hard time playing against you. But it does, you got to remember, you're having to use a lot of those um, spell and trap zones, right? The magic zones. So you got to be careful that if you do play all these three, you're okay with only having two open slots. Um, if, especially if you play like Card of Demise or something, and you're about to get rid of your hand, you want to set all those down so you don't lose the cards right so you got to be careful and just manage the amount of spots you have open all right now the fun part the extra deck right we get three runic monsters really there's uh hugin the runic wings this one allows uh, zero attack zero defense doesn't really do anything if it gets destroyed though by battle or card effect you just add it back to your extra deck meaning you could technically play three but there are ways around the destruction you, you can have it banished whatever but when you uh, summon it, you can discard a card from your hand and then grab a field zone from your deck. So basically, you can discard a card after summoning this 
and get fountain out i don't like doing that because you're basically losing two cards you're, you're losing the original runic card or whatever that you had to use to bring it out and then you're discarding another card just to get fountain out and very likely you're going to be put in a position where you don't have another runic card um, to be able to combo and get it back into your hand but you so you do have to manage on how to use that one uh, next up runic wings this one's actually kind of cool so uh, same sort of effect you can discard a card after it's summoned and get a continuous spell which is runic allure is the only uh, target so you're able to get runic allure into your hand by discarding but there are two more effects with this guy and actually i should have said both of these have the secondary effect um i think let me check yeah yeah, yeah. okay so if another card um so this one is if another card that you have would be destroyed by a card effect you can banish this card from the, from the field so that helps protect pretty much any other card that you have whether it's your fountain your lure um, or any of the set cards even so that is a one time sort of negate almost next up this one does negate but only if it's targeting a runic card but what's important about this guy is it can it activates when anything uh, targets a runic card so it's not just destruction it's if anything's being targeted you can banish it and negate that that activation also at the end of every turn both turns it's at the end of every uh, end phase you gain a thousand life points which can be useful because a lot of times you're gonna be you're gonna be taking a little bit of a pounding um, from the other deck as long as you don't hit zero you're fine because you're not aiming to lower their life points or you know have enough really you're only wanting a thousand to be able to activate this but Anyway, next up, Gary the uh, Gary or Jerry, the Runic Fangs. This is my favorite one. Can't be destroyed by card effects, so already it's got a little bit of a negate there, or uh, immunity there. When you special summon it, you can add any non-quick play Runic spell from your graveyard to your hand. That's Fountain or Allure, and it doesn't require any discarding, so this gets destroyed by something. Just bring it back by bringing Gary out. And uh, more importantly... When this card's destroyed by battle, you target any card on the field and destroy it. This is important because even if it gets its effects negated, this effect doesn't apply until it's destroyed. And so it will go off in the graveyard, right? They're, they're going to need to have a, um, uh, what do you call it? That graveyard uh, banning card. Oh, man, I'm blanking out. Hold on. Called by the grave. I don't know why I forgot that. Then we get a bunch of cards that I'm going to be honest, you can fill up with anything. I just I just fill it up to have stuff for the um, uh, to have stuff for the uh, just filling up the max right the quarter the 15. So I there's no scenario where you're going to have more than one monster on the field anyway. So Nightmare Phoenix isn't going to pop off. Dark isn't going to pop off. Gaia isn't going to pop off. Nightmare Unicorn isn't going to pop off. They're just there to fill up the amount or whatever. You know, maybe they have something that like forces you to uh, banish three of your extra deck monsters. I, th I forget what card that is, but it's just there, right? Now, there is Gravity Controller. This one can be brought out with any of these runic monsters that you can bring out because it only requires one non link monster. So, this card uh, can't be destroyed by battle with a monster in the main monster zone so it's really just there to make sure not, it's not being destroyed but more importantly if this card battles an extra deck extra monster zone monster uh both the monsters gets returned to the deck or to the hand or whatever so super important if there's something you need to out and it's got destruction negating or something like that immunity um so anyway that is the breakdown of the deck we're gonna go ahead and look at two replays to show you two different ways this deck can go um and yeah let's jump right into it all right so here is the first replay i like this one let me move this guy somewhere where it won't be in the way let me just check real quick once it loads up um honestly i think right here will be fine i think you can see what you need to see so Starts off, it's their turn first. They're playing one of the uh, Odd Eyes sort of decks. Um, this deck can be a problem sometimes because they have a lot of, uh, you know, the field spell that allows you to not, or it stops you from being able to play spells. If you if they have a spellcaster, I believe, what is that? The uh, I forget what it's called, but either way, it can be a problem for this deck. 
And there's a lot of things, right? Like they have uh, a lot of counters in this sort of deck where if you're playing spells, they're going to keep you in counters and quick effect negates and that sort of thing. But he didn't do any of that. So this is a very long play that he does. Very long turn. And he's just popping a whole bunch of monsters, whole bunch of... Uh, he's setting up the board very efficiently. But if you see my hand, this was a great opening hand. So, of course, he gets Astrograph out on the field. As you can see, I'll, I'll cycle through some of the effects. But really, this is just a... He's just got a bunch of combo extenders. At the end of the field, at the end of the turn, his field wasn't that threatening. To some decks, it could have been. But here's what we left with. And once his turn ends, which, let me extend it out. Alright, so we're going to pause right here. Here's what he's got on the field. He's got Black Fang Magician. It's an 8 scale, right? And once per turn, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls. His attacks become half its current attack. No big deal. Doesn't affect in my turn, right? This guy, same thing. Doesn't affect in my turn. Um, doesn't matter. Now, this does matter if I was playing a different deck. As everybody has probably played against number 41, right? If it's in defense mode... It changes all monsters on the field to defense mode. Of course, links aren't affected. And then if it's in defense position, um, you can't activate the effects. Pretty much what it does. So it negates all monster effects that aren't link monsters pretty much until it runs out of, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, detached material, right? So then you got Apollosa. Of course, this is a quick effect where it can just keep negating monster effects. Again, none of this applies to our deck, which is great. Now, here's where I did mess up a little bit. And I'll show you. So we got Terraforming and Pot of Duality. Those are what you're going to want to start off with. You can ignore the rest of the cards for now. Um, to avoid being ashed, I would have done Pot of Duality first. That would have been ashed. And then I could have ter Terraformed to make sure that I get my field spell. I... Didn't think about that in the time, so I played Terraforming first, and it did get ashed. But it wasn't a big deal, because the rest of my hand was good. It could have been a big deal, though. So it's important that you pay attention to that, right? Just get their ash out as quick as possible. Um, Pot of Duality, of course. That allowed me to get out another ex uh, extender, another draw card, right? Pot of Desires. Again, you got to be careful with how you use it, but I was fine with using it. But that got me my tip. So I put my allure out so that tip does affect the allure and it starts banishing cards from their deck. I, of course, get my runic fountain, play my runic fountain. And this is great because he's got four outs. So it lets me banish four cards with that uh, smiting force, right? Smiting storm. So because he's got four, banish four. And again, this is taking effect every time I'm playing one of these runic cards. So already he's got seven cards in his um banish zone and because so many of them his deck is pendulums having those monsters banished can be a huge detriment because a lot of times they're wanting it destroyed to get into the extra deck right face up um and really he's got a few targets or whatever in the graveyard but we're looking good right now so we just play that just to play and like i said 99 percent of the time that you're going to play slumber you're targeting their monster right because i already played pot of duality i can't summon anyway but I just want to play another card because that allows me to have three runic cards in the graveyard. And I can pop off Fountain to recycle three cards in one turn. Which, of course, extends my play even further. Or at least gets my hand set up correctly. And there you go. As you saw, I used Destruction. Destroyed their bigger scale. I really could have picked either one. I don't think either one mattered, but I went ahead and destroyed their bigger scale, banished another four off the top, banished another one with a lore, and we're at, I mean, look, 15 banished already. Or should it say 16? Now, this getting destroyed, I didn't read this, um, you can target a dark monster, so he brought this out, whatever. Now, I put everything down. Uh, I actually was just testing to see if Card of Demise would still work, and it did, but I didn't want to push it because I only had one spot left. So I was like, you know what, I'll save it. I'll save it for next turn because I got to do a huge push again. So I put down there can only be one, which doesn't affect him right now because he's got one spell, one fiend, uh, one fairy, one spellcaster. So this 
that won't affect anything he's got right now. So of course I do my uh, my golden droplet. Oh, I misspoke. You know what? I was thinking of another game. I guess I did go off. I played. Uh, I did do my card of demise. Put two down, and that's right. I got. I kept the last card of demise because I didn't need it for the next turn. Now let's look at where we're at, though. So we're at seventeen cards in our deck, seven in the graveyard, ten banished from uh, our pot of demise, or I'm sorry, pot of desires. And they're at 21 cards banished, 4 in the graveyard, 8 left in their deck. So let's see how this goes. So he has to do the effect. Now here's where he kind of messed up. He went ahead and put this in attack mode. I go my there can only be one. Doesn't affect anything right now. Do my runic tip. Just. Now you might be wondering why I chained it instead of waiting until this resolved or something like that. I chained it because there's a good chance that once this is done or whatever, the next card they play could destroy my fountain, whatever card they may have, right? So I didn't want to have him destroy my fountain before I could go off of the uh, effect that it has. So I did my runic tip just to get a card in hand. I got my flashing fire that lets me destroy a special summon card. And then I pop off lore, pop off fountain, recycle three from my graveyard. And I get three more cards that can be used. Now, same thing here. I'm chaining it because I don't want more things to be destroyed or the potential for them to destroy it. Now, here's the thing. If Fountain gets destroyed, I can no longer play Flashing Fire or anything else that's in my hand. So I just wanted to make sure I used it, got it out of the way. I really could have picked any three of these. I chose this guy because I just I didn't like the uh, potential. Um, I didn't like the once per turn of a Pendulum card is destroyed. You can send one spellcaster. So I didn't like that he's protecting these back row in case I got to use um, something to destroy it, right? And this is great. Fountain. If my fountain gets destroyed, whatever. Don't worry about it. Get it next turn, right? So I uh, take off the effect of this because I know it'll drop the attack down. And so with the attack down, it can no longer destroy any of my special summon monsters. Um, and then I use Slumber to summon because it, that's really the only thing that matters. So now this guy can't be destroyed by Apollosa. It's got to be destroyed by Baguska or whatever. Now here's where he gets funny. He used the Pendulum Summon to summon all of his extra deck uh, spellcasters. But this only lets you use, have one spellcaster out at a time. So he scooped right after. But he would have lost anyway because he didn't have anything. If he attacked, my Gary would have destroyed something he had on the field. So I would have picked and choose depending on the scenario. And then it would have been my turn again. He has seven cards left in the deck. And I have plenty of runic cards in my hand. Even if I lost both fountains somehow. I would have just used one or two runic cards. He would have had no cards left in his deck. And pfft, then he would have been gone. So let's check out one more. Alright. Now this one is pretty funny. It's pretty long. And this is a good scenario that I want to show you on how a game can drag on. If you're playing against the right deck. So I go first. We'll go a little bit faster. Pot of duality. Right. I grab my uh, dispelling. Put my fountain. Runic tip. Golden droplet to do the combo that I mentioned to you guys. So here's how this goes. Oh, and actually I was really happy when this happened because... I got rid of his Cosmic Cyclone. There's going to be a couple of cards you want to look out for. Feather Duster, Cosmic Cyclone. Um, uh, there's a couple of other big ones, but those are really the major ones, right? So, another four. And I got his Harpy's Feather Duster, so I was feeling really, really happy. But you can also tell by Banishing that he's playing a Sword Soul. And Sword Soul plays a lot of a Banishment. So you got to be careful. You got to be able to sort of nip his combos in the bud before it's too late because a lot of times he'll have something out um, that is benefiting from banishment, right? So anyway, let's keep going. So I used Dispelling. Destroyed this card, which is a great card to destroy, actually. And then I cycle three more back into my uh, my deck, put them all down. And if you can see here, I got Destruction, Spell Trap card, I didn't have a target. Uh, freezing Curses, Effect Monster, I didn't have a target. 
Slumber again, I've mentioned that a lot. And then Golden Droplet. I already used it this turn, so I can use it again. And I kept Cardinalize in my hand just to have it. I, I just, you don't need it on the field. So he had another one, another Cosmic Cyclone, right? So he destroyed, uh, he aimed for my fountain, I believe. And I did uh, Runic Destruction. Now this does not negate the activation of Cosmic Cyclone, but I don't know what else he's going to play. And it's important to remember that he could play something that destroys all my back row or, or just doesn't play any more spell cards. And then this guy doesn't have a target. So I did it just to use it to start getting rid of some of his deck and hopefully hit some of his combo extenders or, or starters. Right. So destroy that. He's got another social emergence, which is funny because I think I had already banished. Yep, I had banished two. He had the third one in his hand, which sucked, but he gets strategist out, which is going to summon another one, right? I use slumber just to bring out my Gary. He aims for that, so I go ahead and use it. He brings out, and this is what I mean. This card ban it benefits so much from banishment. I mean, you can see its attack power right there. It's 47. It should have been 3,000. He gets 100 attack for any... Uh, Banish card. Also, importantly, if this card would be destroyed, you can banish one card from your graveyard instead. If a card is banished, though, you can banish one card each from both your opponent's field and graveyard. And I can't recycle stuff out of the banishing zone, so or the banish zone, right? So for me, anything that's banished is gone, gone. And uh, so you got to be careful, right? You got to be careful with him. Luckily, I have freezing curses that allows me to negate one effect monster's effect. So you'll see what happens. So, of course, Ecclesia, I go ahead and stop his effect so he can't do it on me. This card brings out another one. Brings out, uh, how do you say that? I mean, I see the card all the time. It's Chi Shao, Grandmaster. Right, brings out Sword Soul Blackout, which I should have remembered he had. Now, here's cool. He destroys that. Even though he negated my effects, he destroys Gary and or Jerry. And the thing with Jerry is he can still use his effect. So I go ahead and destroy uh, Supreme Sovereign before it gets a uh, before it becomes a big deal. Now he goes ahead and called by the graves my Jerry, which makes no sense because think about this. I don't bring stuff out of my graveyard. I'll just summon another Jerry for my uh, extra deck. Right, I have three. He negated its effect until the end of the, my turn, right? But the thing is, the two effects that it has is when this card is destroyed by battle, I can target one card on the field and destroy it. So that's not going to happen until his turn again, meaning the call by the grave is going to be uh, null by then. And more importantly, the other one is if it's summoned, I can target one non-equip, non-quick play uh, spell from my graveyard. But the thing is, I don't have anything. He banished my fountain. He didn't destroy it. So I, I don't know what that play was, to be honest with you guys. Anyway, it looks like a bad hand, right? I put down my rivalry of warlords. This is going to lock him into worm and card of demise to get a little bit more out. I'll slow it down right here. So three cards, pretty good cards, actually. I go ahead and destroy one spell. I pick a random one. It ends up being an infinite impermanence. But I do get to uh, banish four more. And look at that. He's at six. So I go ahead and use my Smiting Storm. Another two. Now he's at four. Now here's where I kind of messed up. I put down my Destruction to use next turn. And I have, of course, my Rivalry of Warlords. He uses Sword Soul Blackout that I knew he had, but I had forgotten that he had it. And it allows him to destroy his card, his Worm card, and destroy two of my cards. So I have exactly two. So we're left with nothing on the field. One card in his hand, no cards in mine. Let's see where he goes, right? So he puts another Ecclesia. The thing is, he doesn't have a lot of targets left. Because I think he's got three cards left in the deck. So he ha I, I think he messed up. I think he played it Ecclesia just to see what his targets were. I don't think he knew. Like I don't think he went through his banish zone and saw what he was missing. So I think he just played that. To see if he has something in his deck. And when it found out the only target was already in his hand. He summoned it. Because otherwise, I mean, there was no reason to do that, you know. So. 
I draw a lure, right? And if you look at my live points, I'm at 5,100. He's got three off the top of his deck, right? If you do the math, 17, 17, 17, I'm dead. So we're waiting. I need to be able to get at least one more card out of his deck. And he needs to just keep attacking, really, or find another monster and end me sooner. So 17. I have a lure, just in case he plays a quick spell. Worst pull, probably in my entire deck. Uh, for this particular moment, rivalry, rivalry of Warlords going to lock him into Worm, which is 99% of his deck anyway. Doesn't really do anything. But I'd play it just to maybe bluff, you know, just in case, whatever. I, I use it just for the hell of it. He attacks me. I'm down to exactly 1,700, bro. One more attack from just that monster and I'm done. And then I'm like, oh, I won. I won. Because this is allowing me to summon a, uh, a monster. Any monster will do. It's just the me activating, dispelling, activates a lore. He loses one card from his deck. He's got zero. He drawn out. I just put that just to... Rubbing it, I, I honestly, I just put this card just to rub it in a little bit because it'll also give me a thousand life points. So for whatever reason, he was able to cycle something back into his deck, destroy this card. I still won't lose to this attack. So gain a thousand, and he does the uh, the sore the sore loser thing, and he uh, scoops literally right before his draw phase where he would have lost anyway. I guess he just didn't want to give me the win. But anyway, guys. That is two examples and a deck breakdown of the Runic deck. Uh, pretty much pure Runic. I got no monsters in my entire deck, as you guys saw. Uh, and I'm up to Diamond. Uh, so I haven't reached high. I think I'm a Diamond 5. I just got to it. So let me know what you guys think about both the format of the video, but also the deck. Let me know how you play against it or if you play it at all, if you're going to try it after this video. And uh yeah, guys, I'm going to do a couple more of these videos. I got a few more decks that I play just for fun. They're not super meta competitive, um, though I do have a Labyrinth deck that maybe I'll show you guys that I've had a lot of fun playing. But yeah, guys, let me know. I'm not I don't really do these consistently. Just I felt like making it. And so I'd love feedback from you guys to tell me how uh, how it went. So anyway, guys, take care. I will catch you guys in the next one.